Hey boys and girls, if you have ever looked over any of my code, you'll know that I love to use local functions. Uh, if you don't look over my code, you may not even know what the hell a local function is because I'm, honestly, I don't really see them used that much, uh, but I use them all the time and let me show you why. All right, so I've got this little function here called testing and I needed to do some specific logic in two separate places. So obviously you, we wanna stay as dry as possible. So I've extracted it out to a function. Uh, so now I can call it in two separate places. Uh, but let's say that this logic here is very specific to this uh, function. We'll never use this anywhere else in our project. If this class starts to get big, sure, it's private, but uh, now this function is just floating around, not actually being used by anything apart from this very specific thing. If other people look at our code, they might be like, uh, why is that function there? Like, what, when, when do I actually call that function? But the answer is they don't. They don't need to call it because it's only for this. So what you can do, is limited scope to this function here. Think of it like a, an additional access modifier. So we have public here. So anything that has access to this class can call this testing function, right? We could then make it private so that only things inside this class can call this function. But then think of this as one step further. We're now making this like a private method to the method. So it's scope to the method now. I'm just gonna change that back to public. So this harbors a few benefits. Uh, the first one is obviously I've already touched on it is uh, access. So it doesn't pollute the class. Now classes should generally stay pretty small, right? If you're, if you're abiding by the single responsibility principle, but some classes get massive. For example, player controllers. I like to keep all my uh, player controller logic in one script. I use local functions quite a lot in player controllers just to scope specific logic that is only meant to be used by one other function. Another thing is because we are in this function now, we now have access to this full scope. So we don't actually need to send these A and B in as parameters or as arguments. We already have access to it. So that obviously doesn't seem like such a big deal on this little function, but in big complex functions, it really can. For example, you can have like one or two like global unchanging parameters uh, here and then pass in just like the things that are actually changing and, and dynamic into the local function. Now this next reason is Unity specific. If you don't use Unity, don't worry, this will be over in one moment. But uh, over here in my Unity project, I've just got a mono behavior here and say we've got a, um, whoops, a button click. So button click. And we're wanting to uh, hook that up to a, an actual button click in the in the UI. And But let's say that we wanted this to be a coroutine, right? We, we, we want to click a button and for something to happen over time. Well, normally you'd do something like this, I enumerator, and then like whatever it is, and then uh, just execute log your logic and you do this, right? So this is like a lot of boilerplate to do something that you just wanted to do with the button click. Uh, this is a prime candidate for a local function. Just chuck that in there and your button click is now basically acting like your uh, I enumerator. And that is all I wanted to show for the Unity stuff. So back to the standard C Sharp stuff. Now you may be sitting there saying, bro, I've been doing this for years. I've been using delegates to perform like the same kind of local uh, functions like this. Yeah, me too. But uh, in C Sharp 7, when this was released, I immediately started using this and I'll show you why. So I'll just make that smaller so we can see, and I'll call this testing two, and I'll just make a uh, delegate of this with this signature. So that will be a func, it will take an int, an int, and return an int, and this will be called multiply func, and this will be equal to this, and it will just return i times i1, um, and then we can get rid of that, and then we can just call multiply func, take in an a, a b, as you can see, it's already more work. So functionally, these two methods are doing the exact same thing. I'm actually just gonna reduce the complexity of them a little bit. I'm just gonna remove one uh, call of the functions and let's uh, build it and have a look what is actually happening under the hood. So I'm gonna open up my eye of viewer. And uh, by the way, this local function is at compile time. It just gets pulled out and is made a private method. Uh, so if there's any captures in there, it will just send, uh, it will actually add those as, as arguments to the function. But uh, yeah, the runtime just looks at this as a private method. Uh, but let's compare these two. So let's look at testing first. So as you can see here, it is invoking the multiply function using the call IL instruction. Uh, and the benefit to that is one, it's the fastest way to execute any code. Call can only be used when the runtime knows exactly where the code is uh, at runtime. So for example, in a, when we're calling a just a normal private method or a local function, this code is generated at compile time. So we know exactly where the code sits. 
Whereas if we look at testing two, you'll see that first it actually has to call new obj. Funk is a delegate, which is a reference type. So this delegate is actually being created when the function is called, which means there is some memory being allocated to the heap. And because this is this function has just been called once and then exiting, this now has to be cleaned up by the garbage collector. So uh, keep that in mind. First, we actually have to create the funk. So more garbage. Uh, secondly, we'll see that when we actually go to call the func, we'll see here it is using the call vert IL instruction. Now what that actually means is the at runtime, we don't actually know the, where the logic for this sits, right? Because it's a variable and uh, it's a reference type and this can be reassigned anywhere even at runtime. So every single time that we go to call this func, the uh, the runtime actually has to find where that code is. Obviously we're, we're assigning it and then we're not reassigning it. The, the runtime still has to evaluate that every single time. So yeah, call vert is slightly slower than call and it also generates some garbage here. <clears throat> some memory is allocated to the heap every single time uh, you, you create a new delegate. So yeah, compare that to the local function which, which is a fast call and creates no garbage at all. Now, I just wanna end this with saying, uh, I have had a chat to a few people in the past about local functions and some people like them, some people don't. The main criticism against them is that they say it's not very readable, which I completely disagree with. I just believe that it's because the concept is foreign to them. If you look at any code that you're unfamiliar with, it's not gonna be, you're not gonna be able to pass it very easily, right? Like it's gonna be foreign to you. The more you use something, the more natural it feels. I think local functions actually add readability because you know that this is specifically for this and nothing else. It doesn't pollute, it gives you the benefit of the uh, arguments. It's faster than a func. So if you're, if you're doing this, um, if you're creating delegates inside your functions, change and, and use local functions instead. Uh, to me, there's no downside to it. And, and just remember, a lot of companies actually don't even like inline conditionals because they say that uh, they're hard to read as well, right? They want them wrapped in, in braces. And uh, if you're like most of the world, you're putting braces on a new line. So uh, that will be five lines instead of one. Uh, you can't tell me that that is more readable than just an inline conditional. But yeah, that was a pointless and kind of like unnecessary rant, but uh, there it is. Like the video if you liked it and uh, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.